everybody. Thanks for watching. Glad that you tuned in. I know that this video is going to bless you. And so stay tuned, subscribe to our channel, like this video. We'll be loading more that are gonna bless you, that'll encourage you, that'll empower you. An impartation, I believe, from heaven, as God touches you today, as you watch this, your life will never be the same. I love you, God loves you, and God bless. We'll see you soon. Are you ready this morning? Amen. To hear the word of God? We know God has something special for you this morning. Really what was on my heart this morning, if I was to give it a title, would be living in God's presence. Amen? Living in God's presence. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You know, Revelation 1.10, John on the Isle of Patmos said, I was in the Spirit on the Lord's day. Other translations say, I was wrapped in power or I was wrapped in His presence. There is a realm of the glory of God that God wants us to live in on a daily basis. Amen? When it comes to even, you know, that's the thing is, people say, well, I'm going to show up at a meeting and God then was going to show up. No. God's meeting is always going on. Heaven has not stopped. That's why a lot of people think oh, we need another Pentecost. We don't need another Pentecost. Pentecost fully came. Amen? Come on, we read it in Acts 2. It says Pentecost fully came. We don't need another Pentecost. Pentecost is still happening. Amen? The Holy Ghost is still moving. The same Holy Ghost that fell on the day of Pentecost is the same Holy Ghost falling today. Amen? Amen. So really, if you look at it in heaven, in relation to heaven, it's one big meeting. It's one big service. It's still going on. It hasn't stopped. Amen? Come on. So it's not like we're waiting for God to show up. He's waiting for us to show up. Heaven's still moving. We just got to get into the flow. And that's what that's what John experienced. Amen? Come on. That's what we see what happened here. Hallelujah. We see John, it says, I was what? Wrapped in his presence. And that's what God wants for us. He wants us to live in his presence on a daily basis. It's not like we're going to leave here. Hello. We have a church service, so we come get into his presence. And then we leave and we're out of his presence. No. We can live in the presence of God 24-7, 365 days of the year. Amen. There shouldn't be a moment. Now, a lot of people, that's the problem. They step out. I believe a lot of people obviously get out of God's presence. Why? Because of the cares of this world. Because of distractions. Because of things that are a more priority to them than being in God's presence is to them. Amen? Come on. Then you have those that just don't even have the faith for it. My goodness. They think, you know, and then you have the religious that think they only get it for a certain time. It's only for a certain service. It's only for a certain meeting. You know, there's churches all over that where they don't allow the Holy Spirit to move. Hello? They don't allow the Holy Spirit to move. He can only move on Thursday night in the back room somewhere. Hello? Do you understand what I'm saying? You see, because the Holy Spirit is moving. He's the same. Just like He moved on the day of Pentecost, He's still moving. There is no change. There's no difference. Amen? If we could go back to the upper room... What we experience here even now in our day, it looks the same. It hasn't changed. Amen? Same Holy Ghost. Same power. Come on. Same tongues of fire. Same. Souls getting saved. Souls getting transformed. Come on. People's lives being impacted. People being filled and baptized in the Holy Ghost and in fire. Remember, Jesus is the baptizer. Look, man is not the baptizer. Hello? The church is not the baptizer. A denomination is not the baptizer. Jesus is the baptizer in the Holy Ghost and in fire, and He hasn't changed. Amen? It's not man. You don't go to man to get, get it. Amen? Come on. Now, the thing about it is, legally, that's how God works upon the earth. Hello? You know, God is bound by certain things. Hello? That's why whenever something is to be done on the earth, God always finds a man, finds a woman. Amen? Amen? But that man or 
or that woman is not the baptizer. Amen? That man or that woman is not the Savior. That man and that woman is not the Holy Spirit. And that's one thing that we as a church should be very careful that we're never anybody's personal Holy Spirit. That's right. People run around trying to be somebody's Holy Spirit too often. Come on. That's not. If you're wrapped in His presence, you know it's Him. It's not you. Amen? Come on. You're not trying, you're not, you're not trying to be anybody or anything that God hasn't called you to be. Amen? Amen. Don't try to duplicate. Don't try to be. If you want to be an imitator of anybody, you be an imitator of Jesus. Amen? That's what the Word of God says. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So live it in His presence. Amen? 24-7. That's His desire for us. Hallelujah. And there are realms of His glory. Of God's glory. Amen? And we barely touch. It's like, you know, that's why people, but I will tell you, people run around from church to church and service to service and meeting to meeting trying to find His presence. When His presence, you can live in His presence no matter where you are. It's not just for or designated for some service somewhere. You know, that's why sometimes even you see these great moves of God. Look, not that God's not moving there, but everybody runs off. And that's fine. If they need a touch from heaven, that's wonderful. But, but wherever you are, come on. God will move upon your life. You just got to call out to Him. That's why you say, Jesus, come touch me. Look, if He's the baptizer, you can ask Him to baptize you. If you, come on. I know everybody here has been baptized in the Holy Ghost and fire. Amen? Come on. And that's one of our responsibilities. You know, the amazing thing about Paul, if you look at Paul, everywhere he went, he obviously preached the gospel, introduced people to Jesus. But one of the things he always did as well. Hello. It's not just, he was not just getting people saved. He was getting people baptized in the Holy Spirit. Everywhere he went. Come on. You know, he walks into Ephesus. What does he do? He finds 12. Hello. That were saved. They were saved. And they said, he asked them, have you been baptized in the Holy Spirit? He said, I haven't even, they, all 12 of them, you understand? said, we've not heard anything about the Holy Ghost. Hello? We've not heard, what do you mean this baptism? Well, well, have you been baptized? Baptized in water unto repentance. He said, well, hello, this is your time. This is your, come on, this is your time. And so what did he do? He, baptized, he got them baptized in the Holy Spirit. Amen? Come on. Hello. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, that is a baptizer in the Holy Spirit. That's exactly what He did. He went around. Come on. Getting people filled. Getting people to a point of overflow. Getting people set on fire. Amen? Amen. And then they shook all that place. Hallelujah. So that's really what God's looking for us. Amen? But that's where His presence is. It's in His presence. You know, the devil a lot of times wants to get you out. Come on. He can try to get you. If he can get you distracted off of some, off on something else, then he can get you out of His presence. You know, that's why you stay in the secret place. Come on. Who knows about the secret place yes. of the Most High? Yes. Come on. That's why you stay in that secret place. You don't allow the devil to draw you out because if the devil can draw you out, he can take you out. But the devil can isolate you from the things of God, get you away from the things of God, get you away from God's will, then the devil can take you out. That's what the devil tries to do. And he's very good at it. He's been doing it for what? On the earth, 6,000 years? Hello? Over 60. He's very good at this. Look, he's very good. How can somebody like that, you see what I'm saying, who's doing that upon the earth, he did it in heaven before. Where you take a third of the angels. A third of innumerable. You, you can't even count. You see? But he was able to draw them away from God. So he's very crafty. He knows how to do it. He knows how to get you off onto other things and get you distracted. That's why you have to be on your guard. That's why you always have to guard your heart. That's why you always have to guard your spirit. Amen? But in the same way that you would guard your spirit, your spirit, you have to build it up. You have to build your spirit up so that it's strong. So the moment that you see the attack, the moment that you see the enemy coming in and trying to get you distracted or draw you out of God's presence, you are aware of it. You know it. Hello. And you stop it. 
Come on. That's where a lot of people, they just stay quiet about things. They don't do anything about it. They just allow the devil to come in and just take whatever he wants. You know, I'll tell you what. If a snake, how many of you would allow a snake just to come in your house and live? No way, Jose. You would not allow it to happen. The same way you don't let the devil come into your life. Amen? You don't allow the devil in any, any area. You shut that door. Come on. Because I'll tell you what, the moment, I remember even as a child, I remember one time there was a snake in the backyard of our house. And I saw that snake, and if you know anything about me, especially back then, I did not like snakes. Hello? Who likes snakes here? Not one person. Okay. You know, not that you're scared of them, but I just didn't like them. I got bit by a snake once. Anybody got bit by a snake? I got bit by a little python. But it actually... So you got hit by a rattlesnake once or twice. So, praise God, you know. <laughs> Nothing happened. Glory to God. But I remember I got bit by, because I had a friend of mine, and we got into, into selling some reptiles. You know, selling like turtles and snakes and little ball pythons and Burmese pythons and all that kind of stuff. Some of those get bit, you know. But this is a little one, and it latched on to me. I didn't like that stuff. I did not like getting bit by anything. Amen. You understand? Hello. So, but I remember this snake. And it's a pretty good sized snake. And it's going around in the, in the backyard of the house. Dad! Come get this snake. There's a snake. My dad came out. All he did is he picked up that shovel, went over that snake, and cut its head off. And that's how you've got to be. Amen? Yes. Come on. Because your heavenly father has equipped you with everything. Yes. Amen? Yes. To deal with the snakes in your life. To deal with the enemy in your life. Yes. To deal with the wicked one in your life. Come on. That's yes. why he has no place. The, the Holy Ghost, come on, has empowered you. Yes. The same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead is the same spirit that quickens your mortal body. The same spirit, hallelujah, the Holy Spirit that leads you, that guides you, that teaches you. He is your comforter. He is your helper. He is your advocate. He is your strengthener. He is your intercessor. Amen. Come on. The Holy Spirit, He will help you in any situation. But He can only help you if you let Him. Amen? You know what I mean? Sometimes that's why, you know, it sounds like I'm a record, a broken record sometimes. But you know what? It's okay. Repetition brings revelation. Amen? Amen. Repetition. You know, how many times do you read in the Word of God where God says the same thing over and over and over? That's why there's like 500 scriptures on the subject of faith. 500 scriptures on the on the subject of healing. 500 scriptures on the subject, you know, of of, di of these different areas. Come on. But then there's over 2,000 when it deals with prosperity. Hello, you think God's trying to get something across to you? Yes. I mean, God's not a broken record. He's just telling you. Because why? The more that you hear it, the more your faith is increased. Amen? Because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. Yes. But that's where you've got to be built up. Amen? Come on. Build your spirit up. Build your spirit up. How are you going to build it up? By what the Word of God says. Amen? You got to, You have a Holy Ghost defense system that will not allow the enemy to come in, steal. Come on. He won't come in and kill. He won't come in and destroy. And the matter of fact, the place that you are, He can't touch that place either. Amen? Why do you think God has put you here? Amen? I'm not talking about just the river church. I'm talking about the valley. God has put you here so that you will be used by God. You are the restraining force on the earth today to stop everything that the enemy wants to do. Hello. That's why, you know, look, that's why I watch these people when they deal with the border immigration. They don't have a clue. Why? Because they're not here. But we're right in the middle of it. We see it. Hello. That's why God puts you in some. And don't ever forget this. God puts you in an area, come on, so that you can then impact that area. That you can grow even spiritually in that area because of the situation, because of what's going on. You're always developing your spirit. Amen? Come on. You always you want a mature, strong spirit. So God will put you in a place. Amen? Come on. So that you'll grow and you'll learn, but that you will make a change. Amen? There's not a change that's going to happen. Change will not come without you. Hello. Right. You are the city shaker. You are 
the, the state shaker. You are the nation shaker. Amen? That's how God uses. God uses. That's why we're seeing all these souls. How many, sweetheart? How many? Over 12,000? Come on. Yeah. Hallelujah. We're seeing this Rio Grande Valley shaken, and it's just the beginning. That's the thing. It's just the start. Yeah. It's just like, you know, and sometimes that's what all we focus on. That's all we look at is the tip of something, like, a, like an iceberg. You know the tip of an iceberg, very small compared to what's underneath the water, what you don't see. But we look at just what we can see sometimes. That's why we don't live and walk and operate and function by what we see. But we walk by faith, the unseen things. Amen? Come on. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So one of the things I want to talk about when... When the Holy Ghost and fire comes, amen, when Pentecost really comes, hallelujah, signs, there will be signs, amen? Isn't that right? There will be signs, hallelujah. Go with me to Mark. Go with me to Mark 16, amen? And let's just look at some of those. Hallelujah. In case you're wondering where Mark 16 is, it's Matthew, Mark. Amen? And it's the last chapter of Mark. Mark 16. Let's start in... Um, whoo! Yeah, verse 14. Afterward, He appeared unto the eleven as they sat at meat and upbraided them with their unbelief and hardness of heart because they believed not them which had seen him after he was risen. And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Whoo! Isn't that awesome? That's why I'm glad I look like a preacher at one time because somebody preached to me. Amen? Amen? Hallelujah. Praise God, you look like a preacher at one time where somebody preached the good news, the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. He that believeth and is baptized, this is you, this is you, shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. And these signs shall follow them that believe in my name shall they cast out devils they shall speak with new tongues they shall take up serpents and if they drink any deadly thing it shall not hurt them they shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover so then after the Lord had spoken unto them he was received up into heaven and sat on the right hand of God and they went forth and preached everywhere. The Lord working with them. And confirming the word with signs following. Amen. Amen. You know, a lot of people are expecting Jesus to get off his throne and come down and deal with their problems. When actually Jesus said, I've empowered you to deal with those problems. Jesus has done everything that he's going to do. Amen. Come on. You know, and when it concerns the gospel, I forget who it was that said it. It just that some continue to talk and have heard about the second coming of Jesus Christ, but there are many that haven't even heard about the first coming. Amen? That's why it's important that we preach the gospel. Isn't that good? That's good. Amen? See? Because the thing about it is there are people out there that are lost. Look at this young girl. Look at all these people that we encountered throughout this, even this last week. That, I mean, just totally lost. Come on. That's why it's so important for you to be led by the Spirit or actually live in His presence. Live in God's presence. Amen. Because then He can move and He can work through your life. Amen. That way you're not distracted by all these things. Because that's all those people are. They're distracted. They're distracted by what the world has to offer. And all they can get out of it. The world will do nothing but rob from you. The world will do nothing but steal from you. Amen? Come on. 
But it is living in His presence. And so you can see Jesus, I mean, saying, look, I'm going. But now it's time for you to go. That's why it's funny to me because when we were on the road preaching, traveling as evangelists, you know, we preach all over America. And some people, I mean, they were always looking for a word. You know those people that are always running around looking for a word? So I would always do this. I would say, look, if you're here today, you need a word from God. I have a word for you. Go. Preach the gospel. Amen? Come on. Go preach the gospel. Come on. Because that's when you're going to see the power of God may manifest. Amen? Come on. God, yes, He's omnipresent. He's everywhere. But He only manifests Himself where the church is. He manifests Himself through the church. Amen? I'm not talking about He manifests Himself where the religious institution is. He doesn't manifest. He manifests Himself where faith is. He manifests Himself, amen, where the Spirit-filled believer puts the man upon the anointing and says, I'm a carrier of the anointing, and wherever I go, I'm going to take that anointing. Amen? amen. That anointing goes with you. Amen? And so that's where God manifests Himself. So that's where the signs and wonders follow the believer. When the Lord, come on, will then work with you. If you're not, you know, that's the thing is we always say, you've heard me say it before, it's not the great suggestion. It's the great commission. Amen? But it is a commission, meaning that the Lord is working with us. We're His representatives here on the earth today. Amen? And that's why God has strategically put you in a place. You know, one of the things that we see and have dealt with many of times is regarding purpose. Most people don't know what they're called to do. And look, I'm just going to tell you, it's just a reality. I was like that for many years of my life. What am I called to do? What is my purpose in life? You know, you'll never be satisfied. You'll never really feel fulfilled until you're walking out your purpose. Amen? You know what I'm talking about? Come on. Who's been in those places where you just like, boy, I'm just like stuck in the mud. I'm just spinning my wheels. I'm just going through the motions. Well, you know why? Because you were probably out of your purpose. You were not operating and functioning in what the area God called you to be. Amen? Come on. Or you could have just been between seasons. I mean, that happens a lot too. Because, you know, between seasons, that transition, amen, period, is sometimes the hardest period of a person's life. Amen? Because that's when the devil really comes. Because you're between assignments. But you know what? I don't really believe that a person should actually be between assignments. Because when God, come on, closes one door, He opens up another one. Yes. When God, come on, when He when He graces you, when you're living in His presence, the, God will grace you to then go into that new chapter or that new season of your life. Amen? Amen. Come on. Hello. But I believe even in that, when, when people you, you hear the saying between seasons, it's because, you know what? They're probably motivated by fear or something to get into to step into that new season. They're probably, you know, delayed. And the delay is coming from themselves. Hello, you know what I'm saying? You know our mind. Hello, there's a lot. Uh, matter of fact, there was a lady that spoke on the brain there at Dr. Rodney Howard Brown with, uh, you, what's her name? Caroline Leaf. Dr. Leaf spoke about the mind and the brain and, and a lot of the different areas all this week at Ministers and Leaders Conference. So, I mean, there's a lot because where's the battle? Hello, where's the battle? It's in your mind. Amen? You know, that's where we reason. Too many believers reason themselves right out of doing God's will. They reason themselves out of stepping out in faith and doing what God's called them to do. Amen? Why? Because of the reasoning. They fight, they battle with that. That's why it says take captive of every vain imagination. You've got to take captive of those thoughts. You've got to take captive of those things that are not in line with God's will for your life. Amen? Hallelujah. No, the battle, that's why. That's why people, who's ever laid in bed at night and just, you can't sleep, but you just think, you think. You're just, it's like a little hamster on the on the wheel and just running and he's running and he's running. It's like somebody got him hyped up on Red Bull or something. You know what I'm saying? Amen? And your your mind will just begin to race. 
Come on. You know, that's not God's will for you. That's where, that's really when that begins to happen, if you just begin to start taking captive of those thoughts. Amen. And every vain imagination, you would stop it. Hello. That's where you, when you just race and race, and I can't, and you know, there's times where it's just like that. It's just, just racing and racing and racing. Well, you know what? I find I'm not in his presence. And I just got to get right back in. God, I'm in your presence. Because that's where worries come. Hello. Yes. Well, I know I'm talking to just a bunch of saints this morning. I see just a bunch of angels. Nobody deals with anything like that. It's just me. Amen. No, come on. We all deal with it. We're, we begin, our minds will begin to race. Or we begin to think. Or we begin to worry. Come on. God doesn't want you worrying about one thing. Amen. Jesus is the Prince of Peace. And that's where you just got to step right back in and say, Lord, I'm going to get back right in your presence. Oh, I love you. Oh, I worship you. I magnify you. You step right in. And guess what? You'll just go to sleep just like a little baby. Amen? Come on. You won't fight it. Come on. You won't fight it. Have you ever seen a little child where they just fight? They fight going to sleep. They fight going to sleep. They fight going to sleep. Amen? That's sometimes how what we're doing. Come on. It's the flesh and the spirit. We're just fighting against each other. Yeah. Amen? Come on. There's that odds. That's what the Bible says. That the spirit and the flesh are at odds against one another. Yeah. So you kind of can fight, but you just step right back in His presence. Amen? Come on. Is this helping somebody this yeah. morning? Because yeah. there are things that you might be going through. Things that you might be worrying about. Remember, Jesus is the Prince of Peace. Yeah. Amen? And you can find rest in Him. Hallelujah. You can just rest in His presence. God doesn't want you worried about one thing in life. No. Come on. Because he's actually giving you everything concerning life and godliness. Amen. He's giving you everything. You have it. You don't have to worry about it. But that's why you have to stay in his presence. Amen. Yes. Hallelujah. But it's very important because where the area the devil operates is the soulless realms. Your mind your will, your emotions. Amen? Right. It's in that soulless realm. He, do you realize that just like God can give you dreams and visions, the devil will give you dreams and visions? That's why so many people, they have some epiphany at, at the midnight hour and some special revelation from God. No, it's not. It is from the pit of hell. It says there, even it says that, that the enemy, that the devil will appear as an angel of light. Just because it looks right, just because it looks like it's God, doesn't mean that it's God. Hello. But that's what happens is, because they, what? They just step out for a moment and they give the devil a place. Look, the devil, all he needs is a little area. He just needs this little area of people's lives. That's why you can't give them any area. That's why people struggle. God you can do anything. I surrender all, but. Right? Come on. You know, we've all done it. Come on, people. Our people. There's that human nature that's always in battle against the God nature inside of you. So there's this human nature. But remember, it's the small foxes that spoil the vine. Amen? That's why you live in God's presence. Guess what? You don't allow any small foxes to come in. You don't allow anything in your area. But the soulless realm... That realm, come on, of your thoughts and your will. Because remember, it's not your will. It's His will. Right. What did Jesus say? at the very In the Garden of Gethsemane, He even said, what did He say? If you can take this cup from me, Lord. If you can take this cup from me. But nevertheless, Lord, Your will be done, not mine. Amen? It's not about Your will. It's about His will. Amen? But the only way you're going to get connected in with the will of God is by staying in His presence, by living in His presence. Amen? Yes. Now obviously we know we read and study the Word of God. Amen? Yes. Hello. Yes. Why? Because it's the known will of God. Amen? Yes. So if you've got, you know the known will, then God will begin to reveal to you the unknown things. Amen? Come on. Because there's so much that's still a mystery out there. Hello. It's still a mystery. Many don't know. Many don't even know the simple things. That's right. And this may sound like a simple message, but it's a message that will carry you 
for the rest of your life. It's a message that will carry you through the storms. It's a message that will carry you so that you can endure. It says, endure to the end and you'll be saved. Okay. Amen? Come on, because God knows you're going to go through some things. You're going to have to endure through some things. But it's only in His presence. Amen? Amen. It's only in the presence of Almighty God where you're going to be secure. Amen? It's only in His presence. Glory to the Lamb of God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Whew! So there's going to be signs. We just <laughs> kind of got off on there, but there's going to be signs we just read. Amen? Come on. And these signs shall follow them that believe in my name. Whose name? The name of Jesus. Amen? They shall cast out devils. Every single believer should be casting out devils. Come on. Yes. Look, Pastor Gloria. I'm not going to tell the whole story. <laughs> the whole story. <laughs> Pastor Gloria <laughs> had a story. <laughs> oh, no, I didn't know it. That's like a made up word. I don't even know what that is. Amen. Hallelujah. Story. So whenever Pastor Gloria tells a story, it's a story. But anyway. Praise God. She was at the at the hospital, went to go pick up her mom. Her mom had surgery. Praise God. She's doing good. Everything's, everything's doing good. Amen. Hallelujah. So she was up there waiting for her mom. Mom's getting released and everything. And sees this guard standing by, by a door. And says, oh, what's going on? And there's some lady. She's being very difficult. Well, she was being difficult. Why? Because she had passengers. She was from a mental institution. They had her there at the hospital doing some work on her. Hello, whatever, doing some tests on her. So Pastor Gloria said, hey, can I go and talk to the security guard? Hey, can I go in and, and tell this woman about Jesus? Can I go minister? I mean, just Pastor Gloria, just, you need boldness. Everybody just, just raise that, just lift your hand towards Pastor Gloria right now. Thank you, Lord God, for boldness. Amen. Hallelujah. She, she's going to get even more bold. No, I'm serious. Why would you just, you see a police officer, security, whatever, standing. She said, hey, what's going on with that person? Can I go in there? I'm going to go lay hands on them. I'm going to go preach the, the good news of Jesus Christ to them. And what did, the guy, what did he say? You could try. That's what he said. You could try. So she went in there and she starts preaching the gospel. And a full manifestation happened. Hello. Mm -hmm. So she had to deal with the devil. Come on. She had to deal with it. The lady was screaming at her. The top of her lungs screaming at her. Get out of here. You get out. Amen. Come on. you got to take Amen. hold of those things. Come on. Every believer should be casting out devil. Yes. Amen. Yes. Come on. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> you, can, you can try. I ain't going to try. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on somebody. So every believer should be casting out devils. Amen. Hallelujah. They shall speak with new tongues. How many tongue talkers do I have that pray in the heavenly language? You know, that's the thing about it is you should be praying in the Holy Ghost. Why? Because that actually is a gateway to the supernatural. That builds up your spirit. Amen. Your spirit, man, as you pray in the Holy Ghost. That's why you need to pray. Come on. Paul says pray without ceasing. Hallelujah. Praying. Come on. In the Holy Ghost. Yes. Come on. You shall speak with new tongues. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You should flow in the gifts. Amen. Look, you don't will the gifts of the Spirit. The Holy Spirit wills them. Hallelujah. But He's looking for those that will step out to use them. Amen. Come on. To build up their brother and their sister. Remember. The gifts are for edification, for building up the church. Amen? Amen. Come on. Hallelujah. Then it says here, it says, they shall take up serpents. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, there's some churches, religious as they may be, that have the serpents. Have you ever seen them? They bring the snakes in. Yeah. 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 I mean, that's not what it says. It doesn't say play with snakes. No. It doesn't say test God. No. Hello. You see, there's the other side of it. Right. There's religious fools that are out there that do things mm -hmm. and put themselves in danger and harm. Mm -hmm. I mean, they drink strychnine. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Woohoo! 
Lost it. You see what I'm saying? That's not what this is talking about. This is talking about dealing with the enemy. Amen? Come on. Dealing with the enemy. And anything that would come against you. Remember, when Paul was on the island, remember, he went to build a fire. Who knows the story? He gathered the wood. He built the fire and a viper came out and latched onto him. Amen? So you've got spiritual serpents, but you have natural serpents. You need to deal with both. Amen? Look, you can't just always be doing things on the natural side without dealing with the spiritual side. Amen? Hello? I think the Word of God even talks about that. First the natural, then the spiritual. But here's what happens is that the viper comes out and latches onto his arm and bites him. And they all think, this guy, he's a bad dude. He must be a murderer because, the, because of, you know, they believe in karma. Mm -hmm. What goes around comes around. Yeah. They think this, he's, gonna, he's a bad dude. But what did he do? Paul fling that thing back in to the fire. The same anointing. Come on. That's why Paul was living in the presence, in the anointing of God. Yes. That nothing can touch him and harm him. Amen. Right. Come on. That's where you're to live. So the same fire that exposed the viper is the same fire that destroyed the viper. Yes. Amen? Amen. Come on. He flung it right back in and they saw that no hurt came to him and they had a mighty move of God. Amen. Yes. Come on, somebody. Yes. Hallelujah. So dealing with it. The natural side and the spiritual side of every attack of the enemy. But no deadly thing can harm you. Amen. Come on. Because what does it say next? And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. Amen. Come on. Nothing will hurt you. Look. <clears throat> you know, that's one of the reasons we... Every Sunday morning, we do communion. And I started doing... I will be putting a book out shortly for everybody... And we'll be giving out communion to everybody for one week. And we're going we're gonna to ask that you would do it. That you would take communion on a daily basis at least one week and start a lifestyle of that. Amen? Yes. Come on. Because what does Jesus say? As often as you do it. So you should do it often. Yes. In remembrance of me. Amen? But you know, that's one of the reasons that we do communion. Because guess what? There are things out there that you will eat that are that are that could harm you. Amen. That's, right. That's why we encourage everybody eat healthy, eat GMO. No. Not GMO. There you go. I was just seeing if you were listening. Uh -huh. You don't want to eat any GMO. Amen. If you only knew what they do. That's why there was. A, I just heard recently. Well, I mean, I've done some study on this myself, but I heard recently where they talk about GMO. You know what they do? They inject all these seeds, all these foods with different bacteria and fungus and all this kind of stuff. That's why people are suffering from skin rashes. Like, have you ever seen anybody with psoriasis? Is that what they call it? Where they have... Yes. That's because it, there's eczema. Come on. Arthritis, joint pains. That's all because of the fungus in their system. That's where you can see somebody who looks skinny from the back, but has a fat belly. Why? It's fungus. Yes. It's a fungus buildup. Yes. That's why one of the drugs that they give out there, whenever people are dealing with arthritis, dealing with inflammation, joint pain, dealing with, uh, especially in the area of, of uh, what is it, psoriasis? Yes. Psoriasis and eczema, they give a drug called Humira. It's an antifungal. Hello, I'm just, I'm, you know, hello, I'm just giving you a little information. But what I'm talking about here is that that's why we come to the Lord's table. Amen? Come on. And we, we, we do it in remembrance of what Jesus did. Amen? Come on. Hallelujah. Because it brings an awareness to our spirit. We should always be. Come on. There's something about remembering and putting yourself into in remembrance. Amen? It's funny because... People always want to put God in remembrance of His Word, but they don't even put themselves in remembrance of what God did for them. Yes. Amen? Amen? Come on, somebody. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And live the lifestyle that reflects that. Amen? Amen? Come on. So there you see it. That's why we do that. Amen? Because there's foods out there that are killing people. You can just look at some people. They're sickly. Why? Because they're eating bad stuff that is actually killing them. But there will be nothing that will harm you. Nothing that will kill you. No deadly thing shall hurt you. You're not going to be living in a doctor's office 
going from doctor to doctor and specialist to specialist, you will walk in perfect health. Amen? Amen. Come on. Look, I always say this. Divine healing is great, but it's not God's best. That's divine right. health is. Amen? And God wants you living in divine health. Amen. Completely set free. And that's what, that's what this is saying. No deadly thing shall hurt you. Amen? Amen. Come on. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Amen? Amen? I love it. Jesus never said pray. Did you ever see Jesus pray with the sick? He never prayed with the sick. He healed the sick. Jesus never said for you to pray with the sick. He said heal the sick. Amen? And you should always expect that. Look, I'm going to share this real quick in closing. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You know, last night I had a, I had a dream. And I saw myself standing in this big building. It was a big building with a lot of people. But what amazed me is when I begin to pray for people, if you're sick in your body, in your physical body, you're sick. You need a healing. You need a touch from God. It was amazing to see the hands go up and how many there are. There are a lot of people that are sick in the body and outside of the body. Amen. You know what I'm talking about. In the body of Christ that are Christians, and then outside, a lot of people are sick these days. But there is a mighty healing movement that is coming. Amen? And people are going to be healed left, front, and center. All, I mean, left, right, and center, every, come on. Amen? Come on. Well, how is that going to happen? Do you, through the church. Amen? Come on. You lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. Thank you, Jesus. Were you blessed this morning? Amen. That's what I had in my heart. Amen? Come on, living in His presence. Because then guess what? Every place you go, His presence goes. Right. Amen? Every place you step in, you expect the glory of God to show up. Hallelujah. And touch lives, touch hearts, transform. You know, it's not just about a touch. It's about the change that comes from the touch. Yes. Amen? Amen? Come on. That's why God wants to use you. Because everywhere you go, the matter of fact, I'm going to tell you, there are people you will reach that I can never reach. Amen? Amen? There are people that you will reach that your neighbor can't reach. Amen? But God wants to use you in such a powerful way. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Wonderful, Jesus. Well, just close your eyes and lift up your hands this morning. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for your presence in this place this morning. That you're touching hearts. You're touching lives. You're transforming. You're equipping. Hello, Lord God, that even as a message and the word went forth this morning, I believe it will not return void to you. For your word, Lord God, does not return void. And you're touching and working on the inside of people right now, Lord God, even that they would make the adjustments that if they've been stepping out and they recognize it, Holy Spirit, reveal those areas to them where they've been maybe stepping out of your presence. Stepping out, stepping into an area that's very dangerous ground. It could be just something little that they're doing. That every single person will make the adjustment in their life. As Holy Spirit, you move upon them right now. Move in their lives. Move in their hearts. Speak to them, Lord God. And that all of those little tweaks and changes that are being made right now. As they open their hearts to you. God can only make the change if you give them permission to make the change. Amen? So just even right now, just even as I'm praying, just make those changes. Allow God to make those changes. Just give Him free reign and free rule over your life that He can make the change in your heart. Whatever needs to change. Amen? But that you're going to make a commitment even this morning to step right back into His presence. Amen? Look, maybe it's something like anger. Maybe it's something, maybe your words Whenever something happens, you use even a certain word that you shouldn't even be using. Whatever it is, you could be doing something. Maybe it's the way that you're treating your spouse. Maybe it's the way that you're even you're treating co-workers. Whatever it may be, I don't know. But that really the heart attitude, hallelujah, that heart, heart attitude will change and you'll have a heart after God. And therefore, you'll have a heart towards people and they'll see it and they'll recognize it. And they'll see the love and the care and the warmth. And that you care about their lives. You care about their eternity. 
You care about them in such a precious way. Thank you, Lord God, for using every single person here in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Wonderful Jesus. Who just senses the anointing? Who said, who, who, this message was for you this morning? Amen. You said, I, I, need to, I, need to, I need to change some things. Amen. Look, I'm going to tell on myself. I, I, I have a word that I use that I'm not going to use anymore. But, I, but driving for me, the traffic is not decreased. You know what I'm saying? It's just increased. And I use this word a lot. And I caught myself. You know, idiot. No, I'm just telling myself. Hello. Idiot. You know, because people will cut you off. Hello. No, I'm just being transparent. I mean, it's just, it was something that's really been bothering me and eating at me. So, look. Come on. We all need change. Yes. And then, so I'm driving down the road. And I said, Pastor Gloria, pull up Matthew 5, 22 and read it to me. And she read it up. And that's exactly what it says. Don't call anybody an idiot. Amen? Come on. But you know where that really that conviction started? Was with my son Nathan. Because he heard me saying it. Oh, this idiot. You know, I started using this word. Hello. No, it's not right. I'm not justifying it. Amen? It's not right. I started using this word idiot. And Nathan said, Dad, this is in the Bible that if you call anybody an idiot, you may not go to heaven. Hello. And I'm like, that's right. That's Matthew 5, 22. And that's exactly what it says. Amen? No, so everybody needs to make adjustments. Amen? So you know what I call them now? Genius. <laughs> Amen? There's a genius. <laughs> Amen? Come on, you know. Come on. But we all need to make those adjustments. Amen? And it'll be by the Holy Spirit. But you see, what I'm telling you is just that one little thing where you're just, you get out in the flesh instead of staying in His presence. Amen? Come on. That's what we're... That's what we want to see everybody. We're preparing you for eternity. Amen? Yes. We want to see your life be used. Come on. Not just impacted personally, but that your life will impact others. Amen? Amen. Glory to God. Well, we love you. God loves you. Amen? If you need prayer, come and talk to me. All the hands on you. Amen? And we'll see that thing come to pass. Amen? Yes. You need healing in your body? You're going to be healed. Amen? Come on. <laughs> Hallelujah. I rebuke this hernia, this hiatal hernia in the stomach and abdomen. I rebuked it in Jesus' name. They, the doctors report, they say it's lifelong. No. I rebuke that. It will not be lifelong. I command that hiatal hernia to go. I rebuke it from your body in Jesus' name right now. That's it. It goes now. And your body will line up with the word of God. That's it. That's it right there, Coach. That's it. That's it. It goes. It goes. It goes. It goes. In Jesus' name. That's it. Just the peace of God. The presence of God. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. Hallelujah. By the fire of the Holy Ghost. Hey everybody, thanks for watching. You know, I want to tell you that everyone that is watching this video, that God loves you and has a great plan for your life. And if you don't know, if you were to die this very second, that you would go to heaven, you can know for sure. The Bible says that we've all sinned and come short of the glory of God. And the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. And so if you don't know, if this very moment, you would breathe out your last breath that you would go to heaven. I have good news, friend. You can know for sure. You can make Jesus Lord of your life and your life will never be the same. So if you would like to receive the gift that God has for you today, say this prayer and believe it in your heart. Say, dear Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Forgive me of my sins. Wash me, cleanse me, set me free. Thank you, Jesus, that you died for me. I believe you are risen from the dead and that one day you're coming back again for me. Fill me with the Holy Spirit. Give me a passion 
for the lost, a hunger for the things of God, and a holy boldness to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. I am saved. I'm born again. I'm forgiven. And I'm on my way to heaven because I have Jesus in my heart. Amen. My friend, as you prayed that prayer, you are a child of God and you're on your way to heaven. Always remember to run to God and not away from him because he loves you and he has a great plan for your life. Well, thank you again for watching. I'm Pastor Jason and I love you and God loves you and we'll see you soon. God bless.